if you ever see a mist like that just like rolling at you you just want to turn around and, and just go the other direction you were coming from just like go as fast as you can especially if it smells like ammonia is in the air. Ammonia is one of those things that we've kind of been using for a long time, like antiquity chemicals. Like the Romans used to ferment urine to clean their clothes. They didn't know it was ammonia that was in there that was doing the cleaning, but they knew it cleaned their clothes, so they used it. Now, you fast forward to 1756, around the time of the Industrial Revolution, there was a Scottish physicist and chemist by the name of Joseph Black who was able to isolate pure actual ammonia gas and confirm that it was, in fact, this clear, colorless gas with that pungent odor that we all know so well. When you isolate things, you kind of get to figure out a lot more about them. And one of the things that we were able to figure out is that not only can we use it to make cleaning products, we could also use it to make fertilizers. And we could also use it to make things that go boom. But the fertilizers were important because this is around the time of the Industrial Revolution where the population growth was booming. So more people need more food, more food, need more fertilizers. So before the 20th century, the main way that we would get our ammonia was by dry distilling poop, more or less. Organic refuse, waste, trash, stuff that had nitrogen in it, what's called nitrogenous matter. When you heat this stuff up, a lot of that can break down and turn into gases that contain ammonia or things that can be turned into ammonia. And that is the main way we were able to get ammonia to make our fertilizers and our cleaners up until about the 20th century, at which point a revolution happened. A controversial figure by the name of Fritz Haber teamed up with this other guy who's less cared about, Carl Bosch, and they came together and formed, figured out this process called the Haber-Bosch process, which unlike heating trash in a chamber, you could just take nitrogen gas, which is roughly 70% of the ambient air, and hydrogen gas, and mix them together under the necessary conditions with the right catalyst, and produce ammonia gas in pretty solid quantities. This change the game. The quantity of fertilizers and cleaning products and chemical things that could be made just using all this ammonia was revolutionary. Unfortunately, Fritz Haber was not a good guy, to put it bluntly. His nickname is the father of chemical warfare. So, yeah. That being said, the Haber-Bosch process was still used to produce the vast majority of ammonia that we've used industrially over the last few decades. And while a lot of efforts have gone into finding even better ways to do it, because it isn't still the best, it absolutely is the reason why we can have tanker trucks of this stuff zipping to and fro to deliver this very important feedstock to farms and fertilizer manufacturing plants. Now, while it's very good for us to make fertilizers, it's not good for us to be exposed to it. Fortunately, and somewhat unfortunately, our bodies do produce ammonia in small amounts at certain times. So there is a certain tolerance that we can have for it, which is why your bottle of glass cleaner that has 5% ammonia or 10% ammonia just smells not great, but it's not gonna harm you. That's not the same though as if like anhydrous pure ammonia gas is leaking somewhere. First and foremost, the smell is might make you vomit. It's, it's so strong. If you find yourself somewhere where you smell that, you need to get out of there. Because aside from the chemical burns it can cause if you get exposed to a really, really high concentration of it, like getting close to that mist cloud we, we saw, it can kind of just outright beyond suffocating because there isn't enough oxygen. There's just a whole host of reactions that ammonia can undergo once it's in your body. And again, because it is something that our bodies produce and use in some ways, the presence of so much can trigger all kinds of weird signaling pathways in your body. So it's just not something to play around with like that. Again, your household ammonia cleaner is absolutely fine as long as you're not spraying it in anybody's face and using it in a ventilated area. But yeah, if you're out and about, especially in like a rural agricultural area and you smell ammonia really strong, you probably just want to go back the way you came. And if you see a cloud like that, yeah, dip, out, you out, that's it, it's a wrap. Whatever you were doing that day, you're not doing that anymore, get out of there. But yeah, there's a lot of history to ammonia actually. It's like one of those like chemicals of antiquity, like we've been using it for a long time before we even knew what it was, but I hope you found this interesting. I hope you found this helpful. And if you have other questions about ammonia or you want to see that longer video, let me know in the comments. Appreciate if you hit that like button if you enjoyed this one. Until next time, skim thug.